Hey guys, my name is Khaled and welcome back to another video. So in this video, I'm going to be discussing whether I should be upgrading to the new Mac Mini that houses the M1 silicon chip. But this video will be split up into two different segments. So first of all, I'll talk about my machine and what I use it for, and then talking about the M1 and how it potentially can increase my productivity and my time frame in how I get my work done. Okay, so let's quickly move on to my device. I have the late 2012 Mac Mini that runs the i7 processor, which is clocked in at 2.3 gigahertz quad core. We've got memory of 16 gigabytes, 1600 megahertz DDR3 and a crucial one terabyte drive along with Intel HD graphics 4000. So bear in mind, um, this has been upgraded from four gigabyte around to 16 and it had a mechanical hard drive with a spin rate of 5400 moved to a crucial MX500. Okay, so initially when I first bought it in 2012, it was a very good machine. And to be honest, if it's brand new, it's gonna be a good machine anyway. But as time went by, we upgraded the RAM and storage as previously mentioned, and it just gave it a new lease of life. So now moving on to one of the main factors, what do I use my machine for? So I use the Mac mini day to day. I browse on it. I edit my videos for YouTube and use Photoshop for the thumbnails. My brother also uses this machine because he does a bit of freelance um, video editing on the side on top of his normal day to day job. OK, and then so far we've had absolutely no issues at all so if you've been following me on youtube you would have noticed that i record in 1080p at 30 frames per second so recently i acquired the canon m50 and instead of recording at 30 frames per second it's now at 60 frames per second you can still do 4k recording on the m50 but the machine just can't handle it and to be honest apart from a select few big youtubers a lot of people still record at 1080p and because the consumption is mainly on a mobile phone now it doesn't really matter if you record it at 4K. I mean, as time goes by, yes, 4K would be really nice. It'll be a welcome addition. This machine hasn't had any problem. And at one point when my brother took on more work for editing stuff after his work, um, he was looking at a potential um, upgrade to the 2018 version of Mac Mini. But then we had a look at the benchmark and speeds and we thought, well, oh, fair enough, it's a 50% increase in terms of performance for both single core and multi-core. But then it didn't really warrant that extra 900 pounds to a thousand pounds because at the end of the day if it's working like our mac mini from 2012 then it's working however things have recently changed so the new introduction of the m1 silicon chip by apple has totally changed the game i've seen a lot of rave reviews from youtubers uh some of my friends have it as well and they just said it's it's just a totally different class of beast i mean in terms of single core performance it's almost 300 percent better than my i7 and then it, it, it just beats even the top end intel processor in terms of single core performance and multi-core isn't bad as well rendering times are fantastic in terms of final cut and everything just seems a lot smoother bear in mind it's still running on top of the rosetta 2 platform stuff like final cut is optimized it's using the m1 silicon chip however other applications such as Adobe Suite will use Rosetta too. So there is a sort of translation layer in between, but even then it's still running crazy fast and people have been raving on and on and on about it. So if we quickly have a look at the configuration, so the base model that comes with eight gigabyte of unified memory and 512 gigabyte of RAM on the Mac mini cost 899 pounds. Now, every single addition is a 200 pound extra okay so if i want to move from 8 gigabyte to 16 gigabyte that's going to cost me 200 pounds and personally i think i'll definitely go for that option i'd rather have 16 gigabyte than have 8 gigabyte i know that everything is pretty much system on a chip so once you've chosen your spec it will be there for as long as you have it okay but with the storage you can get a external drive and 512 gigabyte should just be enough so i can fully match it to in terms of memory and storage i can match it to my one but you're looking at around 1299 pounds and that is still quite a lot of money okay so if i reduce to 200 pounds and move back down to 512 gigabyte storage that's just under 1100 pounds for a decent machine so it is a difficult choice i'm not gonna lie it is a pretty difficult choice and um it's that or i am also thinking of getting the mac pro because the mac pro Obviously, you've got the addition of portability. 
um, and another great thing is I've been looking at reviews in terms of battery efficiency it's second to none I mean a lot of people have been saying that they can take it to the cafe you don't have to worry about taking a charger because you can still have 60% use it for several hours and at the end of the day it still leave with 40% of battery and a lot of people have been saying that, that they've used the battery in one charge for a week and it hasn't run out and they're only charging it when they need to I mean it's something that I definitely can consider now because when I purchased the Mac mini I think including Including the upgrades it cost me 900 pounds and I wanted to get into the whole Mac ecosystem without spending several thousand but now with the Mac Pro I mean it's highly efficient as well so if I go about or if I'm traveling on the train then I can do editing on the go and it's something definitely to consider because the Mac Pro can be used as my main computer dock it connect it to my two monitors and then it has a portability factor so I can take it if I'm going out or about or even if I go on a holiday I can check some stuff and do editing on the fly now at the moment it's pretty much decisions 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 okay it's still quite a hard choice I know the M1 Mac mini is far superior to what I have at the moment but for what I use my Mac Mini for at the moment, it's doing the job. I don't have to wait around a long time. My computer doesn't crash if I record in 1080 at 60 frames per second. I can use Photoshop, have Final Cut open, do both at the same time. It has no problem at all. However, as a channel, I am also growing. I mean, we've nearly hit 200 subscribers. So thank you, thank you very much for every single one of you who have subscribed. It means a lot. I remember not too long ago, I only had around 20 or 30, but now we are nearly approaching 200. So as time goes by, I know it's something that I'll definitely need to consider because I can create more content, get it out quicker and then do it in less time. But for now, because I'm only recording in 1080p at 60 frames per second, it's doing the job. I mean, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Is it something that I should upgrade to? Another sad factor is you can't connect the eGPU to the new Mac Mini, but hopefully with our update, that's something Apple will reconsider and uh, they might have the function back on but I'm, I'm not too sure all right guys if you made it all the way to the end of the video thank you very much for watching this was a quick look on whether i should upgrade to the new mac that houses the m1 silicon chip so if you're thinking about which one you should get my personal opinion will be if you're on a tight budget then definitely do have a look at the 2012 late 2012 iMac with the i7 processor quad core do a little bit of upgrades and if you're doing work on 1080p on final cut or if you're using garage band logic it will be perfectly adequate without any problems at all but if you're quite a um, high intensive user and you need it for your daily productivity needs or if you're continuously working with clients you're doing web development you're doing coding you're doing video editing you need the whole adobe suite then definitely the m1 mac mini will be something that you should consider or definitely buy because at the end of the day if you look at it from a professional or business perspective you're getting a lot of performance for the value being paid all right guys if you made it all the way to the end of the video thank you very much for watching if you did enjoy the content hit the like button if you want more then do subscribe with the bell notification as always i'll see you in the next one stay safe peace